Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KeepAdger.com out here for part two, an update on my carnivore journey. This whole thing kicked off just over a month ago, probably about five weeks as of filming this right now. And yeah, I started down the road, pretty much just eating meat as well as organ meats and salt and water, pretty much it. Cut everything out to include coffee and yeah, pretty much rolled with it. So initially I'd gone and got blood labs taken. Never got those results because I was like, whatever it is, is pretty much what it is. And then four weeks later, after having that first blood draw, I went back, had a second blood draw, and then basically a week later, bringing us to approximately right now, about five weeks into it, once those blood labs were back, I ended up going, sitting down with my doctor, and we basically went over those blood labs. Here is that. So the first um, kind of section we're going to look at here is the your NMR lipid profile. So it's a kind of that in-depth look at your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at this is your first date. Um, so you started out high. Uh, so LDLP is the particle number. So these are like the vehicle of um, the number of vehicles you have carrying bad cholesterol through your blood. Okay. So yours was 1,995. So if we look at this chart here, that puts you at high, but just almost into the very high category. So, on the border. so historically, uh, this number, when this is high, it's a good ind indicator of like coronary artery disease risk. Um, okay. So cardiovascular risk factor. The higher this is, the higher risk. Right. This is your regular, just LDLC, what we normally look at on a, a simple uh, cholesterol panel. So this is bad cholesterol, you started out high at 181, borderline of very high. So that being said, probably if we would have reviewed this prior to your diet, probably would have said, eh, it might not be the best diet choice, but it's an experiment and we'll get okay. further um, into that. HDL, this is your good cholesterol, 63, that's actually great range. Um, we like to see, that they say greater than 40, I like to say greater than 50. So 63, that's, that's a good number. Okay. Your HDL is your heart protective cholesterol. So okay. um, that's a good one to have high. Your triglycerides were 68, so that's great. Um, this number comes a lot from sugars and carbs. Okay. So we like to see that less than 150. 68, it's a great Medium. number. Mm -hmm. okay. Total cholesterol was 255. Our goal for this one is under 200. Moving down... Um, to here, these are the HDL particles, so it's kind of same as LDLP, HDLP, this is your good cholesterol particles. That's 34, that's great, we want to see it greater than 30.5. Okay. Um, and then small LDLP, so this is um, small LDLP particles are high, you have a lot of those. So LDL is always associated with bad cholesterol, HDL, good. Um, and then your LDL size, uh, was actually a, a fine size at 21.5. A lot of this, you kind of get into the weeds. I feel like the big, the big important things are LDLP, LDLC, your HDLC, and your HDLP. Okay. Um, this is a chart here, so you can review that kind of um, on your own. It's percentiles as far as where you fall in your numbers. Back again to kind of like we do an insulin resistance score. So... Um, based on your cholesterol numbers. Yours is 25, less than 45 indicates that you're insulin sensitive. So you're not, you don't have any markers of insulin resistance, which okay. would put you at risk for uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, moving back here to kind of small LDLP, still high. So that LDL associated with bad. Um, yours is high. Your large HDL, so good cholesterol particles is 5.9. So that's good. Um, that's above desirable range. And then your HDL size though is a little low. Um, so HDL good, we want those to be a little bigger. Okay. But your LDL size, for whatever reason, is normal. Um, right. So Eating here's again right. another chart um, on the insulin resistance. Okay. Uh, so kind of you can see where you fall in these percentiles, but overall um, your insulin resistance score is low. So. Um, that's good. And then your complete blood count, 
I believe everything in this was normal. So looking at your white blood cells, your red blood cells, um, your immune cells, those were all normal. Your complete metabolic panel, so looking at your, your fasting glucose, that was good, 92. We like to see that one less than 99. Kidney function here looks great. Electrolytes look great. You had this one little elevation in your AST, which is a, a liver specific enzyme. 45, high limit of normal is 40. Not super concerning. Um, and we'll get to that because it normalized this next time. So it could have just been a momentary. Yep. Okay. Your vitamin D, however, uh, started out 22.9, so that's on the lower side. Um, we want over 30. Over 30, because we call vitamin D deficiency is less than 20. Um, so we'll see kind of what that did okay. as well. And then your B12 in great range, uh, 376. So normal is 232 to 1245, so it's a very big range, but huge range. You're, not, you're not B12 deficient. So. Okay. Or at least you didn't start out B12 deficient. Mm-hmm. And here's another kind of um, chart based on those LDLP, LDLC. So if I would have printed this in color, and sorry, oh, I did gosh. not. This mm-hmm. is green. This is the good zone. Red. Okay. This is the bad zone. So you can see where your red initial lighting. marks, your initial marks were, um, in kind of that red, red zone. But we look here at a little more in depth as far as like particle concentration and size. Uh, so lower CVD risk, higher CVD risk. And even with those higher numbers, you're, you're still kind of in the lower range because your HDLP um, was in a good range. Um, and then you're kind of mid range on that LDLP. And then moving down here to look at the insulin sensitivity, you're pretty much, you know, 50th percentile and below. So not indicating um, any insulin insulin resistance there. Okay. Um, so that's that's good. These certainly you can um, look way more into depth in them yeah. and, and mm-hmm. research all. Uh, but there's it's there's so much information. The charts are actually really nice. And then your cardio um, cardiac C reactive protein was 0.63, which does so given all the like elevations in the bad cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Your cardiovascular risk based on this um, inflammatory marker is low. All right. So that's some good news. Overall, that's good. Yes, right. yes. So then after we repeated these, and it was about one month, I think, mean, four, four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. So you can see there was a huge jump Massive in your LDLP. Uh, so it went from one nine nine five to three thousand two hundred and eighteen putting you in the very high category your ldl went from 181 to 307 yeah into very high yes and your total went to 391 from 255 significant increases huge huge um hdl was 66, so that bumped a little. So the HDL is still in great range. Um, The small LDLP also went up 543 to 636. Um, Your HDLP though, that went down, yeah, to 28.3. And that could be, you know, we get our, our boost in the HDL with uh, good fats, so I don't know what type of other fats you're, you've been incorporating, but. Um, a lot of grass-fed, like tallow and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Um, and then, same thing here, it's this, the small LDLP, I believe went up, yeah, from yeah. 543 to 636. Um, the rest of these are, are within normal range. Your HDL insulin resistance score. That was low, I guess. Yes, yeah. It went up. To nine point four. That was good. Uh, sorry, insulin resistance. Still same, less than twenty five, or actually less than twenty five before it was twenty five. So it's even lower now. Um, so, so still insulin no insulin resistance, resistance. Is better now. Yes. Okay. So you're more insulin sensitive. Huh. So. 
this one had a score of 25 and that one it less than 25 less yeah than 25 yeah. right there's not like mm -mm. a marker for mm -mm. it below it right okay and then moving down to your complete blood count same thing all all your Cell lines were in the same range. However, your neutrophils were slightly low, which probably does the neutrophils. So this is one of your immune cells, your immune response cells. Okay. More than likely not related to the diet, but yeah. you may have, your body may have picked up some bug that it was working to fight off um, in, that, in that moment. Yeah. And then your complete metabolic panel your fasting glucose actually went down, so that's, that makes sense why your insulin resistance score also went down. Um, so that was 82, so that's, yeah, that's still great. Everything else, kidney, liver function. So this normalized, this, the AST went to 30. So like I said, I don't know if that was just like a so off chance that, mm -hmm, but your vitamin D dropped. Went down. Yep. From 22.9 to 20.7. 20. 20. So putting you pretty much right at that like vitamin D deficient. Okay. Okay. Need to yes. Your cardiac CR, your cardiac CRP, so that inflammatory marker, uh, actually was lower, 0.46. And your B12. No, I. That one we had to add on and messed up. Okay. So it's on the very last page. I believe it was 0.63. Yeah, yeah 0.63. yep, and, and 0.46. So still low risk, even given that your cholesterol your numbers high. are are really high. Um, is that that's weird, right? So and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, and then B12, B12, 528, and it was 376 prior. So your B12 actually B12 you're doing increased. doing a good job of of getting B12 in. Okay. Moving to this chart. So we have your first, first um, draw, and then your next. So this kind of puts you off, off the, the chart. chart. Um, um, yes. Right. And then as you can see, this is where we see a big difference. And your particle size and concentration puts you more over into the high risk side. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Still everything over here is pretty low. The small LDLP, remember that one increased, so that bumped you over that. Um, the HDL size, that dropped us a lot. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because yours was lower. And so as you up that size, because remember that's a good one, gotcha. it brings you more to this insulin sensitive side. Okay. And then insulin sensitivity increased too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Know some of you guys are like, you are going to die. Probably, but probably not because of this. So yeah, some of those things got crazy elevated. And obviously, I apparently have a vitamin D efficiency or deficiency rather. So going to address that with supplements, both some vitamin D as well as vitamin C. Because apparently that basically acts as a transport for vitamin D, helps your body take it up. And not getting tons of it because... Not out, even though I am outside, not a ton of sunlight up here in North Idaho right now. So what about the cholesterol? You're gonna die. Probably not. A couple of things there. My weight went from 187 to 173, like 14 pounds. Did I just like shed 14 pounds? I did, but more than likely it was probably water. So, when you consume carbohydrates, they do an amazing job of holding on and retaining water inside your body. And when you stop doing that, you start shedding a bunch of water weight. And to that end, the other part of it is your body becomes less efficient, temporarily less efficient with respect to sodium and stuff like that. So I've been consuming a lot of salt because again, your body starts shedding all this water weight because you're getting rid of all these carbs and everything with it to include inflammation and everything else. And with that, your body's like, I need more electrolytes. So I've definitely been consuming a lot of salt. 
But the question is, where will it go from here? Obviously, in about another four weeks, I'm going to have another blood lab drawn and going to revisit it. There is more or less a period of time that your body takes in order to adjust to it. And I think I am pretty much like well into the middle of that period of time. What has the experience been like so far? First of all, when you're just eating meat and like basically animal products, uh, there's arguably limitations as far as recipes. I will say that uh, Essential Carnivore Cookbook, that thing's been awesome. I've made a lot of different stuff in there. It's been amazing. One of the things I made, which wasn't really sure how it turned out, was from one of the deer I shot this year, uh, deer liver ceviche. Basically, essentially like blended up deer liver with lemon juice. It's actually really good and like crazy good for you. Um, Probably one of my favorite recipes in that cookbook so far has actually been, I believe it's bacon liver meatballs. And so yeah, you're basically bacon and liver. One of the times I made it with some of that deer liver, another time with some beef liver. And then one of the times I also made it with ground, I believe deer or elk, and then another time with ground beef. But that was actually really, really good. I made that a couple times. and. There's actually a lot of different recipes in there. And honestly, for me personally, meat isn't like, oh man, like I need to go eat meat. Honestly, the hardest part about it is trying to get, trying to get enough fat in the diet because you ideally want, as far as grams of fat to grams of protein, like equal or more fat than protein. That's a lot of fat. And so that's definitely been a challenge at times, but like I said, I think in the last video, I got this like five gallon bucket of basically grass fed beef tallow. And so been incorporating that and stuff. And yeah, no, it's been pretty good. Like as far as the eating, like I've enjoyed it. It's been pretty good. One thing kind of weird is water and especially where I am, we're actually on a well and water tastes sweet now, which is interesting. But, uh, as far as how, I guess, how I've been feeling with respect to energy and stuff like that, that one's been pretty interesting too. So during the first kind of couple weeks, there were definitely some low energy days. And it's not to say I don't occasionally have some low energy, but once kind of that evened out, like, I don't, I don't know a good word to describe it, but there's just like this baseline and it's there in like part of me almost wants to think of it as lower energy but it's not it's just there's no peaks and valleys it's just like okay cool like let's go do this and it really it really almost seems like this long-term like endurance level of energy and actually to illustrate the point one of the days I ended up going skiing with my boys we ended up driving up to Lookout Pass ended up skiing awesome day up there we basically went like right after it opened probably around 9 30 started skiing closed it down i think around four by the time we got back and i made myself some food because i just basically drank water that day probably about like 1800 six o'clock at night and if i had been whatever like eating snickers throughout the day like i wouldn't have been able to perform any better i wouldn't have like skied better or anything like that i just had like energy and it's just like okay and one thing that's definitely different than like being on a carbohydrate heavy like diet is you don't get like angry when you're hungry like if i had gone till like six without eating i'm sure my boys would have done something and i would have already kind of been like oh, i'm hungry and like taking it out on them like it's a very real thing like snapping at your kids because you're hungry and you're just can't disassociate that with like, oh, you know what? Like I should probably go eat something so I'm not a jerk to my kids. That's a thing. And yeah, being able to literally go ski like all day long and then just drive home and be like, okay, cool. Like I'll make us dinner. So yeah, definitely like a really seems like sustained level of energy. The other day I rode a five, five K, I guess it was sub 20 minutes and I wasn't dying. I was just like, okay, cool. Like, let's go row for almost 20 minutes. 
So no, energy definitely seems to be like just kind of really vanilla, just kind of like endurance sustained throughout the day, more or less. I have to date kept a food log, basically journaling in there, meal times, what I've been eating, things along those lines. And then with that kind of tracking sleep too, cause I figured just kind of one more metric and yeah, been going through keeping track of that. Also with that, been keeping track of bowel movements. And during that first kind of probably like two weeks or so, like body adjusting, definitely some like loose stool, loose bowel movements. And then after that kind of normalized to the point where pretty much just like a healthy, comfortable bowel movement, basically like every two days. As far as body composition goes, I don't know that I've like lost much weight, even though about 14 pounds lighter. I think again, probably more a factor of just losing water weight. I'm sure there's probably been a little bit of loss, probably not lean mass, but probably some fat. But I think for the most part, it's pretty much been pretty much water weight, I imagine. Where does it put me now? Well, I'm gonna pretty much stay the course. I know it's kind of crazy, like seeing my cholesterol like off the charts, but I'm not really sure about that because one, my body's still adjusting as far as that goes. And you look at the other markers as far as insulin resistance and things like that. And eh, like I'm doing pretty good. And granted, we'll find out in about another four weeks or so when I get that second blood lab back and yeah, kind of take it from there. As I did mention though, I will be supplementing the vitamin D and then vitamin C just because it helps it get absorbed in the body. And yeah, just kind of roll on out from there and see what happens. But this right here is that look one month into my carnivore journey. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Up on the ashes and over the